previously on the Death Saving Bros podcast. You have just entered this underground chamber, and there is a unconscious woman strapped to a table. Winona, it was you? Oh my goodness, that lady's tied up. I have to go save her, Milo. and I'm going to scurry off to go save her. I would probably look first at the potions and vials, kind of just what we're dealing with. Whoever was working on this sort of stuff left in a hurry because everything is everywhere. But you do find a vial, and it's purple, and it sludges back and forth. That, that purple stuff in the infirmary? It's, uh, this is the same stuff. And then you also notice there is a line of runes carved into the stone. Milo, do you still have that helmet? You might be able to decipher what those runes mean. The runes say, Binded to the earth within this circle, tied to the user through magic. Essence of life, essence of weave, power complete. Winona is now unstrapped from the table. I shake her real good. (laughs) In a way that helps her to wake up. She says, where am I? You're safe. Manny has come to rescue you. And I come charging over. Winona. And I'm going to start leaning in for a kiss. And she leans forward and kisses you. Regardless, a single happy tear flows down Thad's cheek. I am over in the corner staring at fire. Maybe we should get out of here? Okay, so you guys are starting to head out towards the tunnel. Oh, while they're walking out, um, I'm going to walk towards the crack that I'm staring at. And it is a door. No, I'll open the door. Go up the stairs. And close Every, the door. Everybody else is just walking. <laughs> close the door yeah, behind do you. Do not notice this. You turn around and Dixon is not with you. Where's Dixon? I thought he was behind you. Hey, Manny, why don't you take Winona to the infirmary? Me me and the wall will go look for her. I slip you some low bones with my trunk. You wind up finding the lever that Dixon had found earlier. I would like to throw the lever! Welcome to another episode of the Death Saving Bros Podcast. I am your host and Dungeon Master, Paul Camper. With me today, I have Brad Renfro. Uh, I was reading a book about um, waterproofing basements the other day. They said it was a bestseller. Uh, <laughs> um, I hate it. Matt Smith. <laughs> what does the Mind Flayer buy at the black market? The Lithid Goods. <laughs> the nerds will get that. <laughs> These are good so far today. Let's go to Brad Richards. So, this guy, right? This is always a good story. So, it's hot. His balls. He goes down to the pool. He wants to swim, right? So, he's swimming. Realizes he's got to pee. So, what does he do like a normal human being? Goes down to the deep end. Starts peeing. Well, the lifeguard blows his whistle and he almost fell in the pool. (laughs) Damn it. What? (laughs) Mark this down. Mark this down. He blew his whistle, so the guy the guy was peeing in the deep end. The lifeguard blew his fucking whistle. The guy almost fell in. He got scared. Oh, he was just standing there. Got it. Wow. Way to really take the piss out of that one, Paul King. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, Ben Renfro. <laughs> also fucking die, Beerish, for that last part. <laughs> I think it's funny that Paul put me last today because he didn't want me to interrupt the the, the good intros with uh, my obscenities of how excited I am to be here. Let me tell you, I'm so excited that my my custard slinger is oozing right now. <laughs> what? What the fuck? What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> That's how excited I am. <laughs> Got a leaky faucet. <laughs> my custard slinger yeah. is leaking. Oh, yeah. Custard. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> What else would it be leaking? Put it this way, I'm edging right now because of how excited I am. I'll tell you what we are edging towards is oh, no. the oh. beginning of the <laughs> next <laughs> episode <laughs> of Stop the Death Saving so Rose podcast. <laughs> <laughs> 
I wish Jesus I was never Christ. born. <laughs> that is the most accurate description of how we do this every week, boys and girls. That's probably Paul's best transition. <laughs> what a terrible day to understand English. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, what we do here is we are a 5th edition actual play podcast, and this is our 15th episode of Season 2, which takes place at the Arkshine, a magical college where our characters, Manny, played by Ben Renfro, Dixon, played by Brad Richards, Thad, played by Matt Smith, and Milo, played by Brad Renfro, are all studying magic, or at least they're trying to. But right now, there is some magical folly happening. Magical fuckery, that's what I wanted to say. Magical fuckery happening around the Arkshine campus. And they may have just uncovered some interesting tidbits about why that is happening. Last episode, they wound up going down into the basement of the Arkshine. They discovered a secret passage and a pipe leading from the massive surge that powers the campus that is going someplace that it shouldn't go. They wind up following this secret tunnel, and they come to a large stone room that is surrounded by flame and a table upon which one of their classmates, Winona, is restrained, and she is knocked unconscious. They free her, they wind up looting the room, and then as everybody else leaves, Dixon discovers that there is a secret door that leads somewhere up above. He winds up going to investigate that, and Manny decides that he will continue to take Winona back to her dorm room to recuperate, while Milo and Thad go searching for where Dixon went, and they wind up following after him up these stairs behind a secret door, and that is where we ended. Now, this one is going to be a little weird to record. Uh, Hopefully it will be exciting for you listeners, because we have a split party. We have a split party three ways. (laughs) It's not the only three-way that's going to be happening tonight. Jesus. (laughs) Well... What we're going to do is we're going to start with Dixon, then we'll come to, and yes, I paused purposefully, Milo and Thad, and then we will finish with Manny. Yeah, we will. Yeah, he will. (laughs) Woot woot! (laughs) (laughs) Ooh, the love bow sensu! Ooh, ooh. (laughs) Ooga. All right, let's get started. So, Dixon. Uh, That would be me. That would be you. Do we have to take our headphones off? Uh, yes, unfortunately, we will need everybody except Dixon to take off their headphones. You can't see, but I'm flipping them all off. (laughs) All right, B-Rich, here we go with Dixon. So, you decide to kick down this door and uh, burst into whatever lays beyond it, because you heard some movement, as I recall. You have your uh, sword out. You wind up bursting into what you immediately recognize as a tavern. And not only any tavern, you recognize that this is the tavern in the local Arkshine campus where all of the students go to drink and carouse on any given night or weekend. And as you burst in, it's completely empty. All of the chairs are up on the tables but there are two women in the room. One of them is behind the bar, and the other one is wiping down a table at the far end of the room. And when you burst through the door, they suddenly startle and turn towards you, and the one around the, behind the bar says, Oh my! So, <clears throat> that's, that's, what she's, that's what she says, is, is oh my? Yes. Um, I didn't think I was going to get this far, so I'm, I'm really unsettled by the fact that there's two people just working in here. But I know this place, as you just said. Yes, your character is familiar with this place. And these two women, you are familiar with at least the woman behind the bar. Okay. She is the proprietor. You've seen her around. She has uh, curly gray hair. She is definitely in her old age, uh, probably in her late 60s, early 70s. But she seems to be a jovial type woman. You have you know her to be, at least for other people, someone that they enjoy talking to. And she likes to kind of bustle around and keep up to date in people's lives. Gotcha. So I immediately want to drop 
not drop my sword, but not have it raised like I'm about to murder somebody. Okay. Look less frantic if possible and ask, did you know there was a secret door downstairs? To, to the cellar? Yes. The one that you just kicked down? Sorry about that, but yes. That's just a door. No, no, no. The other door. What, what, what other door? The one I didn't kick down. <laughs> okay, both of you come here, and I want to show them the door that I came through. So the woman comes out from behind the bar, and she is literally clutching her pearls. So are you going to lead her back down into the cellar? Yeah, and I want to tell her, like, listen, nothing's down here. I just came from here. I just have questions. And if you have no idea what this is, then... Well, yes, I have questions, too. Like, where did you come from? That that the door that I'm about to show you. Uh, okay, lead, lead, I, I guess, lead down. I, I recognize you. I know you're a student here, so I'm going to trust you. Right, and I'll sheath my sword. Yeah, and then lead her to the door. Okay, so you head back down the wooden stairs, and uh, you get to the cellar level. Clearly, there is an open door behind one of the wine racks, and again, she clutches her pearls and goes, Oh my! Yeah, so that door leads down into some pretty questionable areas around here, and you have no idea that this was here. Do Is she lying or is she pretty truthful? Like, I can tell she's pretty truthful, right? Give me an insight check. Damn it. Fuck this insight. Wisdom. Shit. Fifteen. You believe she's being truthful. Okay. So you've never seen anything out of place down here? Nothing? Never had anybody walk through here, disappear out of here? Not to my knowledge. Huh. Wait, why don't... Why don't we go back upstairs? We, maybe maybe my my cousin has seen something. Cousin. Right on. Okay. So we'll just go... Okay. So, yes, let's go see what she knows, if she knows anything. This could either be really cool or really, really bad. I haven't figured it out yet. Yes. Um, It's definitely mysterious. Come, come, come. And she heads back up the stairs. And uh, you get back onto the tavern level. As you're standing there, the woman that had been over cleaning the table in the front, she's now cleaning the bar. And whereas the woman that you recognize, who has gray hair up in a bun, the other woman who she says is her cousin, you, you don't recognize her. You've never seen her before but she is wiping down the bar and she has long silver tresses that look kind of grimy and they're let down loose around her face and she's just sitting there cleaning away. Gotcha. I want to ask uh, her, the person I'm with what her name was. The woman that you recognize who is the proprietor of the place, she says, Oh, honey, don't you remember? My, I'm, I'm Mabel. Mabel. Yes. Okay. And the cut. Wait, that's the cousin's name or that's door lady's name? Uh, door lady's name. Uh, the one with the hair up. The one with the hair down has not said her name. Okay. Mabel, what's your cousin's name? My cousin's name is Margaret. Margaret. Even better. So, okay. Excuse me. Margaret. Yes. Hi. Hello. I'm a student here. Nice to meet you. Um, have you been noticing weird shit going on here? When you call out Margaret's name, she looks up at you, and you can see that her face is disgusting. Uh, it is modeled as if she got shingles and just scratched off her entire face. Uh, terrible. She has a broken nose, she has a drooping eye, and her pupils are black as night. And I need you to roll a wisdom saving throw, please. Damn. Oh, fuck. That would be a six. You lose consciousness. Paul. All right. Uh, if you could tell Milo and Thad to put in their headphones, please, and then you can keep yours in. Oh, Ben, you can't do yours yet. <laughs> Let me tell you how hard this is. How hard is it? No, to have... <laughs> 
First of all, when it's just you with headphones in, the rest of us, we have to sit here in silence and just look at each other. <laughs> we can't even have any conversation, so it's very hard. Plus, with me going last, this is giving me way too much time to think about Paul. <laughs> Naked? <laughs> You know, you should be thinking about that necessarily, but this is getting... He's probably super trimmed. (laughs) Paul? (laughs) For sure. The issue is now, now we're going to be 100% alone because all three of you guys are going to be talking that I'm just going to run with my imagination and I don't think that's a good idea. Paul? (laughs) I don't think it's a good idea. (laughs) They're not going to be able to talk him out of it. This is how I get in character. I'm thinking about (laughs) Paul's... Think about Paul's nads. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking roam around in my head like a Fushiga ball. Bro, for the past <laughs> three hours, I've been thinking about Paul sexually <laughs> and what his <laughs> pillow talk would look like afterwards. <laughs> uh, this is not healthy <laughs> to think about your friends in this manner. <laughs> but I'm doing it for this show. <laughs> all right, all right. You guys get back to your thing. <laughs> Thank you. All righty. So. Thad and Milo, you guys uh, followed the path that you assumed that Dixon had taken. You wound up finding the secret door that led out of the stone room with the flames and the uh, experimentation table. And you walked up stone steps. You came to the wine cellar through an open door. While in the wine cellar, you wound up grabbing a keg and putting it in Milo's pocket. And then you tried to go up the wooden stairs uh, because Thad is, in fact, 450 pounds or something like that. Those fuckers creak loudly. (laughs) Wasn't Myla also riding on my shell slash shoulder? Yes. Yes. (laughs) I can't recall. Did you have weapons drawn? I don't believe you did. (laughs) No. I don't think Milo did in the back of Thad's shell. I don't even know if I have a weapon. No, I have like a dagger, I think. Okay. So, uh, those stairs are creaking, and you get to the top. The door at the top of the staircase is open. Do you go through? Well, if it's open, what's on the other side? (laughs) On the other side, you wind up discovering a tavern. And not just any tavern, it's a tavern that you recognize immediately as the local watering hole, we'll call it, uh, where all of the students wind up gathering on any given night or weekend to drink and carouse. And behind the bar, you actually see someone that you recognize. It is a woman with a jovial face, gray curly hair that is tied up in a bun. And when you come up out of the cellar, she heard the creaking and she's already starting to come around the bar and she clutches her pearls and goes, Oh my, I I didn't realize anyone was down there. Where did you come from? Downstairs. Well, clearly you came from downstairs, but how did you get there? I didn't see you go by. We walked up the stairs. Yeah, we were just down in this basement room and then we found a door and we walked up the stairs and then we were in your cellar here. What, Which is apparently what, what it is. What? The, that, does, that doesn't make any sense. You guys have a lot more square footage for storage down here, is what I'm saying. <laughs> there's a there's a lot colder spot you could be putting your uh, your kegs at. By the way, you have the exact same number of kegs that you've always had. That's that's an odd thing <laughs> to say. I can't look directly. Just at so them you right know, now. <laughs> it's an odd thing to acknowledge. <laughs> uh, okay. Um. So. Let, let, let me see if I get this straight. You you came up the stairs into the cellar? Yes. And where do those stairs come from? Downstairs. You are an incredibly unhelpful, Thad. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're kind of just as confused as you are. Uh, okay, okay. So, downstairs. You mean there's a downstairs to the downstairs? Yes. Yeah. How? Here, come on, I'll show you the door. What's your name? I'm Milo, by the way. Oh, Milo, I recognize you. You're the one that's always swiping my cups. What? You're the I did one no that such always... thing, and I go to cross my arms, and just out of my sleeves, you see a couple cups will fall out. Precisely. I'm I'm Mabel, if you don't remember. I see you in here every once in a while. I, I haven't seen you yet this year, but what with the sickness and everything, I understand. Uh, as you can see, and she points around and 
you can see that the chairs are up on the tables, except for one at the front of the room where uh, there is a woman with long hair that is loose around her face, and the hair looks a little greasy, whereas Mabel's hair is nice and kempt. She's down, and she's cleaning one of the tables at the front, and everything in the tavern is just basically, like, put away for the summer sort of thing. Once everything got shut down, I mean, we haven't had any students in here. It's been just the two of us, my cousin and I. You didn't happen to see, uh, Dixon come up here, have you? Dixon, um... Is he the, uh, the, the dragonborn, right? He's, he's the one that doesn't really like talking. The very one, yeah, that's him. Oh, yes, yeah, I, I try to keep up to date with all of you students. You know, I, I do love a good gossip, but no, I haven't seen him. Hmm. But anyways, come, 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 show me this door. All right, ma'am, absolutely. And here's the door. So you lead her back down into the cellar, and uh, once you get down there, you point out, hey, there's the door that's ajar. <laughs> yeah, here's, here's your jar door, and uh, here's all your kegs, where they usually are. <laughs> she clutches her pearls and goes, who am I? Well, that, that definitely wasn't there before. Um, I think I'll have to let the deans know. They should probably come check this out. Who knows what's down there? There's just another table, and... The more tables and... It's a table, but instead of chairs, it's uh, uh, people. <laughs> there are people down there? There was. I'm, I'm so confused. Same. Okay, okay. Uh, let, let's let's go back up to the tavern. I, we'll talk to my cousin Margaret, and we'll, we'll figure this out, and then perhaps we can go up to the school together and get this all sorted. He can. <laughs> all right, let's go. Okay, so you head back up to the tavern. And uh, the woman that was sitting, or not sitting, but cleaning the front table, she's now behind the bar, and she is cleaning off the surface. Uh, Once again, she's got her head down, and she's wiping away at the grime or whatever that's on the bar. Mabel calls out and says, Margaret, um, perhaps we should stop cleaning for the moment and uh, see if we can't help these two figure out what whatever is going down in our cellar. There's a secret door. And we're also trying to find Dixon. Don't forget. Would have walked right past you guys, I would imagine. He, we think he came up the same stairs. No, like I said, we haven't seen any... We haven't seen Dixon. Um, Margaret, do, have, have you haven't seen him, right? And at that, she looks up and... It's just Dixon with a wig. No, no. <laughs> that hideous, huh? Oh, Margaret looks up and you can see that she is just hideous. I mean, her skin is pocked and scabbed, and it looks like she got shingles and just scratched until her face fell off. She's got a drooping eye, she has a broken nose, and her eyes are black as night. Oh, well, in that case, I'd like to add in... (laughs) (laughs) And I need Thad to make a wisdom saving throw, please. Thad has woken up next to that before. (laughs) (laughs) But unfortunately, Thad rolls a six. I just scared the hell out of bed. Okay, um, Thad, you lose consciousness, and Milo, you see Thad just fall to the ground next to you. And, well, I know, he'd fall under me, so I'd fall off of him. Oh, that's right, you're still on his (laughs) shell. Okay, and I'll need you to roll initiative for me, please. Oh, Christ. Initiative? Oh, God. (laughs) That actually landed... On an edge. That was weird. I did see that. I was confused. Man, we should chug that keg before it came up. Then she would have been a perfect 10. I, ro- <laughs> I, I rolled a perfect 10. Look at that. Oh, shit. Okay, you rolled the 10, Milo? Yeah. He's dead. Okay. Well, to your benefit, you're going first. Holy dog fuck. Okay, but what's going on here? Right now, you have just tumbled off of Thad, who has fallen asleep under you. We're going to count you as prone on the floor of the tavern. And Mabel is still by the staircase leading up from the cellar, which is, we'll call it five feet from you. And then Margaret is behind the bar, which is 15 feet from you. So they're both attacking me? They are both there. And all you saw was Margaret look up with black eyes and Thad fell asleep under you. 
I see. Well, if I'm just making conversation, is that counting as an action? No, we generally treat conversation as a free action, uh, unless you're specifically trying to persuade them or do something like that. Uh, I would also allow you to ask questions and then ready an action. Okay. So, bad. What? what did you do this to him? <laughs> uh, when you ask that, Mabel starts walking towards you, like starts coming to hover over you, and she does not have the kind face that you know from your time in this establishment. Okay. Well. I guess, is unproning myself in action? It is half of your movement. Okay. Well, as I'm getting up, I did ask, yeah, what's going on here? What did you do? And they're just moving at me. It's like I can drag Thag out, Thad out of there. <laughs> put, put me put in it. your pocket. <laughs> yes, you just, you just see me take off my pants and we both hide it in my pants. <laughs> I'm wearing <laughs> space <laughs> pants. Yes, yes, yes. In those magic, magic pockets of yours. Creates a spatial paradox to where a black hole is formed. Space pants. They have so much space. Space <laughs> pants. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, well, I would like to summon, summon my Toby to put some distance between us. Or, like, to, uh, like, I want to have Toby appear between me and them. As, like, able to protect me. In case of an attack, as I'm going to check on Thad and give him a... Mouth to mouth. Mouth to mouth. I mean, no, not that. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to find the the spell. If it's Cure Wounds, that would do something like that to him, or dis probably Dispel Magic. Yes, I would like to try Dispel Magic on him. Okay, you cast Dispel Magic, and uh, what level spell slot is that? Casting time. It's a third level spell. Okay, you do not have a surge at a third level s spell slot. So I'm going to need you to roll your focus. Okay, and that's a hundred? Yes, that is a D100. 97. Holy shit. <laughs> okay, so the I win. target DC would have been eight plus your proficiency plus your spellcasting score that's the big number not the small number minus the sp level of the spell slot listen listen paul what happens is i get the i get the worst case scenario well i need to double check because you're awfully close so we want to make sure we we do this right <laughs> well okay the target dc would have been 26 and you rolled a 97 i sure did okay so that is 37 47, 50, it's seven tens. So <laughs> you hit the worst case scenario. If the focus roll is failed by 50 or more, the spell becomes unstable and will react in unexpected ways. Roll a D100 on the random effects table for outcome. Uh, I, I can roll a D100 again. I don't have this table. Yep, I've got the table. That was a 38, which is much more acceptable if I rolled that first time. All right. 38. You actually heal him. Yay. You touch off a fireball right in front of you. Witch bolt. Damn. <laughs> All right. Roll a wisdom saving throw for me, please. You're fucked. And your saving DC is your own spell save. We're dead. I rolled an 18, and my spell save is less than that, so I passed it. Okay, so you avoid transforming into a cat for one minute. Oh, Christ. shit, that would have been kind of cool. But your magic, you try to dispel magic on Thad, and as you're building up the magic in your hands, it just, like, kicks your hands back as if you just shot a shotgun. And there's a loud boom, and you can tell that you were about to cast Polymorph, and you just barely managed to survive that. But now we have Toby out, and is Toby going to do anything after your actions? I I had him ready in action in case they did anything hostile towards me while I was checking on Thad. Okay. And I guess the most logical thing for him to do would be to try to teleport the two of us 
his distance backwards. I think it's just 15 feet, but like teleport backwards if they try to do anything fishy. Okay, so that he he will teleport you if they do anything fishy. Yeah, if they yeah, if they act hostile towards us. Okay, perfect. Well, then uh, next up is going to be Mabel, and Mabel is going to say, I could tell that you were trying to cast Polymorph, so let me go ahead and do that too. No, that's not at all what I was trying to do. I want to help my friend. What did you do to him? And she is going to cast Polymorph on you. Wow, what a bitch. On, on me? Yes. <laughs> You have to make a wisdom saving throw to avoid the effect. I tried to let the computer roll for me this time instead of the dice, and I rolled a 15. Okay, so you managed to withstand the effects of the polymorph spell. She goes, ah, curses. And then you're going to see the ugly woman that had been named Margaret jump up onto the bar, and she is going to look at you with her black eyes and I need you to make another wisdom saving throw. She jumps up onto the bar, and she takes off her top. You take psychic damage. <laughs> <laughs> I just rolled a 14. Okay, you also managed to withstand uh, <sighs> the allure of her dark eyes, and uh, it is going to be your turn again, but I'm guessing that the combination of these two things is considered fishy by Toby? Yeah, yeah. Okay. When I writhe in pain mentally trying to avoid being polymorphed. <laughs> okay, so then Toby will go ahead and teleport at that moment. And when he disappears, then each creature within five feet of the space that the spirit left must succeed on a dexterity saving throw against your spell save DC or take 1d6 plus proficiency bonus fire damage. Yes. All right, so only Mabel is currently within that range. And she rolled a four, which I doubt is going to be dexterous enough to avoid taking damage. Correct. So why don't you go ahead and roll that for me? She dies uh, instantly. Sure. So 1d6 plus three. Four. Okay. So she takes four damage. She hisses at you. <sighs> no. And you have now teleported 15 feet away. In which direction would you like to go? Would you like to go just straight back away from them, which would put you among some of the tables? Or would you like to head more towards the door? That door. Okay. Granted, if you wind up going towards the door that leads out of the tavern, you will wind up getting closer to Cousin Margaret that's currently standing on the bar. Absolutely not, then. The backwards direction. She's the scariest thing I've seen in my life. Okay. That is the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. So you wind up going straight backwards, which is which now puts you uh, 15 feet from Mabel and 15 feet from Margaret. You are 30 feet from the front door, and you are 20 feet from the staircase that leads down into the cellar. It is your turn. Guys, I really don't want to fight everybody, and I, I need to figure this out. Leave me alone, and I'm going to try to cast Entangle this time. It's much, much lower. Okay. Uh, spell slot is... It's a first level. Perfect. You have a s surge that includes a first level spell slot, so that goes off without a hitch. Okay, 20-foot square then, which is centered between me and them, is now... Plants grow out of it. It's considered difficult terrain. A creature in the area when I cast a spell has to make a strength saving throw or be restrained until the spell ends. Okay. Can I cast it to include both of them? Yes, you could. I do that. It would not be directly between you and them, but you could get both of them in the same spot. That'll work. Okay. So Mabel rolled a 23. I am. Hmm. And She's Margaret She's... rolled a 12. Okay, she is then restrained by the plants. They can take an action to try to break it. Okay, so Margaret now starts hissing. She's like, ah, ah, ah. Are, are you actually saying words when you're like doing voices for them? Because I'm just hearing moaning. Yeah, it is just noises. Okay. Okay. Getting ready for bed. I wasn't sure mm -hmm. if I needed to like be paying attention to like what they're saying. 
Nope, they've uh, become almost feral. So after you cast Entangle, Toby now has his action. All right, Toby will be casting a flame seed at the unrestrained person. Okay. You know who else is about to be casting seed at an unrestrained person? (laughs) 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 I rolled a 16 to hit. 16 will not hit. The flame seed is going to pop out of Toby, sail across the room, and then just kind of bounce off of Mabel's clothes. And she's going to glance at it with her side eye and then just snap her focus back onto you, Milo. Your side eye? (laughs) You look at me when I'm talking to you. (laughs) Don't look at me. I'm sorry. I just... (laughs) Can't we talk this out? She's going to say, no. And she's going to cast Phantasmal Killer at you. Damn. Whoa. Okay. I need you to roll another wisdom saving throw, please. Uh, I'm so glad this is my best stat right now. Until that roll. Thought it was a natural one. Ooh. Was not. Uh, let's see. Oh, it was a natural 20. Who knew? No, it was a seven, <laughs> so I got 14. Oh my god. You add seven? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, so as as she casts this spell at you, you can start to see at the edges of your vision just like these terrible, frightening shadows. And when you glance at them, they disappear. They disappear in wisps of smoke. And Mabel is standing there with opposite you with her hand out in a crooked claw you can see it just snap shut into a fist as she goes, No! Curse you! Curse you and your dumb little mind! <laughs> Fucking got him! Did Mabel make her focus save or focus uh, spell check? Well, <laughs> uh, she doesn't need to. What a skank. But uh, Cousin Margaret is going to try and use her black pools of liquid in her eyes one more time and she is going to look at you Milo and I need another wisdom saving throw. The eyes you can't keep looking at me with those eyes. She's got Betty Davis eyes. That that was the natural one. You you rolled a nat one. <laughs> I'll give you my inspiration. I, I I feel like I should just okay. I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> Or I'll just use my inspiration. Do you have one? I do. Oh, okay, you got it then. Oh, you lucky son of a bitch. Wisdom saving. I'm, I'm trusting the computer this time. Uh. Whoa, natural 100. This is like super good. 18. <laughs> nice. Okay, you have once again resisted the allure of those inky black depths of um, Margaret eyes. And it's your turn. Did you just cut her fucking head off? I feel like this would be a lot easier if I had that here, the wall. (laughs) I... (laughs) Damn it. All right, I'm going to try this again where I'm going to have Toby ready his action to teleport us away. And I got to try to wake up this gigantic guy that I can't move on my own again. Just pee on his face. How do you try to wake him up? Just smacking him straight in his turtle head. Thad, you wake up. Ah! (laughs) Wake up, damn you! (laughs) Damn that bitch ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I had the craziest dream. I was looking at Titus's mom. Oh, wait! <laughs> I guess was that a bonus action? Uh, no, that was your full action. Okay. I slap him. I say, I need a wall. <laughs> Not a wall. I need the wall. Hey there, hi there, ho there. It's Paul Camper, your DM and mid-roll announcer, here with another set of reminders. The first reminder is more of a shout-out. We wanted to say thank you to all those of you who reached out and let us know that you voted for us in the Audioverse Awards 2023. 
The polls are now closed, so it's now waiting time while all the ballots are tallied to see if we make the finals. Keep an eye and an ear out, because if we do make the finals, we'll need your help to bring the ship into harbor. All of us on the show are keeping our fingers crossed for these awards, and we hope you do too. The second reminder is that our Patreon continues to fill up with amazing bonus audio, including bloopers and conversational recaps that are filled in with each new episode. It's my hope that I'll be able to find time to cut together the next lore episode for the holiday season, but that may honestly be a bit of a stretch for me. So, thankfully, we do have other gifts lined up to cap off the year, including some original soundtrack files, a sing-along, and a special video presentation of the upcoming Arkshine episode 17. And for our patrons who have been supporting us at the Shade Arrow tier, you'll be getting your exclusive physical rewards in time for Christmas. I'll keep what's in your presence a secret for now, but I'll be sure to give you a hint next episode before the big reveal. So hey, if you're a listener and you're hearing this and thinking, oh gosh, I would love to get a special Death Saving Bros present for Christmas and get to listen to a bunch of extra shenanigans. Well then, you're in luck, because all you have to do is head over to patreon.com slash deathsavingbros. Supporter tiers start at just $2 per month. But then if you're a listener that's hearing all that and thinking, eh, all I want is some merch for this holiday season, check out our shop at redbubble.com. Simply search Death Saving Bros on that site to find all of our merchandise, including our chaotic neutral at best design and the band t-shirt for Thy Apothecary Courtship, i.e. Dixon's favorite Ralvarian emo band. Now getting back to the reminders, the third one we have on our docket is that we have our patrons to thank for making this show possible. Those who have joined our Patreon at the $5 tier get a shout-out at the end of the show, but the following individuals have pledged to support us financially at the $10 tier or higher, so they get their supporter shout-out right now. Ryan Cushman, Gene L. Jackson, and Gavin Knox. Thank you all for your support. The final reminder is more of a confession than anything. I noticed while editing this episode that we actually made a mistake. Milo was able to re-summon Toby despite having used all of his wild shapes in the previous episode. I also realized, when going over my notes for this episode, I had accidentally reversed the names of Margaret and Mabel, so in future episodes they're actually backwards. It just goes to show that we're only human. We don't always get the D&D mechanics right, but it's a reminder that we're here to have fun. And we hope that you're having fun, too. Thank you for continuing to tune in to the Death Saving Bros podcast. And without further ado, we now return you to your regularly scheduled programming. Is it... The wall's turn, or do I need to roll initiative, or... <laughs> the wall's how, turn. how are we doing this? <laughs> wall, if you wouldn't mind rolling initiative to get into this <laughs> fight, please. He just comes to the room. So anyways, I started blasting. 24. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to go. So, Thad, since you technically pop up now in the order before Milo... We'll just go ahead and let you take your uh, action now, right after Toby does his. I guess Toby will shoot another fire seed. Rolling me a 17 to hit. That one will hit and is going to land to deal damage on... The unrestrained gal. Mabel. That one is 8 damage. Okay. That one lands in Mabel's gray hair and she brushes it out real quickly, and once again, she is hissing. Thad, you can now tell that Mabel and her cousin Margaret are not, in fact, the people that you thought you knew. They seem almost feral. Hey, don't worry. (laughs) I think your hair looks better that way. You're up, Thad. Mabel, 
How could you do this? All right, which uh, which way am I laying down? You are currently face down, and face down. You are on your stomach, and you I'm are face down in the dirt. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> You're in your primal turtle position. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna. My arms and legs come out of my turtle shell, and I just skitter across. Now, um, <laughs> <laughs> and then I just snap at them. <laughs> All right, I would like to stand up gracefully. Okay, that is half your movement. And then I would like to quick draw my gat and action surge and just drop like four shots into Mabel. Jesus. <laughs> and also I would like to have my shield out covering up the other one because I don't want to look at that shit. <laughs> okay. Wait, so you're hitting the one that is restrained? I'm hitting... Wait, Margaret's restrained, right? Margaret is restrained. Yeah, so I, I want to hold my shield up so I can't see her and her whole business. Okay. And, yeah, just absolutely unload on Mabel. Oh, I stabbed him 27 like, times in the chest. Manny will be unloading later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first shot is a 14. Miss. God damn it, another 14. Miss. It's whoa. A 20. Hit. And is it critical? Not a natural 20. Oh. And then the next one is an 18. That will also hit. And on the last one, I would like to make it... One makes it hurt. A good. winging shot. Okay. And a winging shot does... They have to make a strength save or go prone. Okay. They're pretty, they're pretty strong. We're prepared to be wanged. Let me see what the save is. The save is 15. Then I will roll for the damages. 28. Oh, wow. Well done. I rolled two tens. <laughs> I mean, for only landing two shots, that ain't bad. That amount of damage does wind up just piercing into Mabel's chest, and she goes flipping backwards and lands prone uh, as she rolled a 14 to your winging shot save. Nice. All right, with my remaining movement, am I able to scoop up Milo and run away? I should keep in mind that my entangle spell is concentration up to a minute, so it's not actually terribly long-lasting. Well, I mean, a minute in combat is ten rounds. Okay. Um, I'm going to say that no, picking up Milo is not a free action, like opening a door, especially since you guys are in combat and kind of dancing around at the moment. In that case, I'm going to be the wall right in front of Milo. Okay. Next up in the order is, in fact, Mabel, who you just caused to flip over and land on her belly. And she is going to hiss, ha! and she's going to reach out. Did she a get re-entangled? She is not entangled. Even after getting flipped back into the, the tanglement? Even though she has been knocked over. Um, it's just hard terrain. She doesn't have to make another strength saving throw because she's not trying to move through the vines. She's just there. Think of it as the vines aren't, like, living. They're not being controlled. They just kind of, like, it, like, sprouts up in, like, a vine, like, trap. And it either gets them or they, like, break out, and it's just hard to walk around there. Right. So, uh, Mabel is still free, and she is going to reach out her clawed hand, wrap it in some intricate motions, and she is going to wind up casting Phantasmal Killer again, but this time directed at Thad. And I need you to roll a wisdom saving throw, please. That ain't so hot. <laughs> a five. All right. So you failed. And this time when the spell is cast, those shadowy terrors that Milo managed to shake off are going to come from the sides and start filling your vision. And you are going to be terribly frightened. Still not worse in Margaret's face. <laughs> so you are now frightened, and you have these terrible visions dancing across your sight. 
which brings us to Margaret's turn, and she is going to make a strength saving throw to try and break free of the vines. Okay, that is a 17. So Margaret has broken free, and she is currently 15 feet from you. So she's going to use all of her movement since it's difficult terrain, which means she has to use double movement. And she is going to run up and slash at Milo. Didn't she use her action to break free? Oh, she did. Ha ha! Darn it. That's Damn it. Terrible. Fuck your plans. Yeah. Don still doesn't know what we're talking about. Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be honest, Ben did not... Well, he can't hear me, but I didn't think that these guys would be able to withstand Mabel and Margaret. So, I'm gonna kill them. Ben, you can't hear me, but what he just said was get fucking wrecked. <laughs> it's cool. Okay, well then, Margaret is just going to stand there. She is now free of her bonds. Just gonna stand there menacingly. <laughs> <laughs> that brings us to the top of the order. Thad, you're up again. And you are frightened. What 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 does that mean? Like I'm scared. Oh. <laughs> so when you are frightened, you have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while the source of your fear is within line of sight. You also can't willingly move closer to the source of your fear, which in this case happens to be Mabel. Alright. I'm gonna be like I'm real scared. Never been the skirt before. And I'm going to pick up Milo and just start booking it to the door. Okay. And since we established that picking up Milo is going to be a full action, that means that you won't be able to dash. What is your movement speed? It's 30, correct? Yes. Okay. And I did say that the front door is 30 feet from you. So you can make it to the front door. You can open the front door, but you can't get out of the tavern just yet. Yep. Just going to awkwardly stand in the doorframe like a jackass. <laughs> Since you are running away and you are frightened of these terrible demon illusions that are uh, chasing you, I need you to make another wisdom saving throw, please. 18. Damn it. <laughs> well, those demons go away and you don't take 4d10 psychic damage. Oh, yeah, that's a pretty Shit. big spell. <laughs> Milo, you're up. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I know this is a pretty big area, so I'm going to try again to cast a uh, fourth level spell and hope it doesn't go as uh, bad as the last time. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm going to cast Wall of Fire to do a little blockade between us and them as we're running out the door. Okay, wonderful. Uh, go ahead and roll your magical focus. 25. Oh, shit. Okay, so you actually succeed. Like, you don't just, like, half succeed. You got under your target, which would be 26, as we determined last time, and you cast Wall of Fire exactly how it's supposed to be. Okay, so I can create a Wall of Fire basically my size that I choose up to like 60 feet long, 20 feet high, one foot thick. When it appears, each creature within its area must make a dexterity saving throw. On a failed save, it's a lot of fire damage, and it's half as much on a successful one. Okay, and are you just putting it between you and these feral tavern owners, or are you trying to maneuver the wall so that they actually wind up in it? going to encircle them. And I also want them to take their saving throws. Okay. You are placing the wall of flame directly on them so that if... Yeah, but just the edge of it. I want them to get through that whole foot thick of fire. It's oblong. <laughs> yeah, I just want to block them off so we can get out of there. Okay. If it's going to make it simpler. Just a straight block and uh, I'm assuming that the fiery side is going to be on their side. Correct. And then I'll use Toby to skip us out the door fully. Okay. You are now outside the door of this tavern. And once you get outside, you can see that it is called the Wicked Eye, which seems 
weirdly prescient now that you just had to deal with those inky depths of Margaret's eyes. But you're in the street in the town that is to the south of the Arkshine. And there's nobody in the streets. Uh, but you can see the Arkshine Tower off in the distance. Now, I'm assuming that you guys are just going to run towards the tower. Unless there's anything that would indicate that's where Dixon would have gone. I'd still like to figure out what happened to him. Th- Thad, shouldn't we ask them about Dixon? I mean, I don't think they will tell us, necessarily. They seem a little upset. Probably because we stole their keg. <laughs> they didn't know about that. I mean, we so expertly hid the fact that we stole it. Well, if you wouldn't have brought it up so many times that we didn't. No, I specifically told them we didn't. No, they, no, no, you're right, you're right. I told them there was nothing missing. I have no idea why they would have, uh... Yeah, no, there's no way they knew about that. <laughs> hmm, so it must be something else. Maybe they're just evil. I mean, do they know where Dixon is? Or do you think we should go see if he also ran out and went back to the tower? Hmm. Do we think Dixon would have gotten fucked up by them? I'm going to say... Yes, probably. (laughs) (laughs) So having been at this tavern before, well, we know, is is there like an upstairs where like they might have like stashed him or like, do we know somewhere like an unconscious uh, grumpy dragonborn would (laughs) would be laid? A tall dragonborn (laughs) could be. (laughs) Yes, there is an upstairs to that building. And then when you were in the tavern, the only area that you could not see was behind the bar. So maybe we can hide out here and I can and, and we can have Toby go look for him in the rooms upstairs. Sounds like a plan. How long does that wall last? Cause this wall lasts all night. <laughs> uh, fire wall will only la- this actually doesn't last too long, maybe just about up to a minute. Alright, Toby better be quick. So yeah, I'm gonna tell Toby to go ahead and go look for our boy. I would also like to make sure I'm reloaded at this point. Okay. And be watching the door in case they come strolling out angrily. If they do come strolling out angrily, I would like to ready an action to attempt a casting of Pass Without Trace on the two of us. Okay. So Pass Without Trace is readied. That is reloaded. Toby is going upstairs. He's going to go look for Dixon. So, yeah, while Toby goes and looks, we will move over to Ben. Brad, Beerich, and Matt, if you wouldn't mind taking off your headphones, please. All right, Ben. Hey, Paul. You are currently in the bowels of the Arkshine Tower with Winona. So Winona says, Manny, thank you so much for saving me. Oh, of course. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Um. Oh, of course. It's the least I could do. You mean after I took notes for you in class, and you never came to get them? I mean, I, I was, I was going, I was going to come and get them. Um, which, which, if you have the notes, I do appreciate it. But don't think that this was, this was because of the notes. It, it wasn't like a situation of, you know. That was like payback for that. I, I I did it because, I don't know, because I care about you. And she glances down and says, "I care about you too." And uh, Manny just blushes. <clears throat> um. Well. Uh. Yeah. Um. Let let. All right. Let let's let's uh. Let's just I guess get back to get to your room now and uh make sure that make sure that you're okay. Which I guess uh. I guess I've been meaning to ask, how, how are you feeling, you know, following everything that's happened? I, I think that's the best move, going back to the dorm, but um, I, I don't really know how I feel. I mean, I feel fine physically, it's just I don't know what happened. I, I got sick, and then I woke up on the table. Yeah, what was the, what was the last thing that you remember prior to getting sick? You know, we, we went to class, and then... The next day, I I kind of got a little woozy, and by that night, I, you know, I went to class, and I just, I didn't feel good, so I went to the infirmary, and 
I talked to Dean Livia, and we we got checked in. And then Meredith came in and gave me a hospital gown, and I don't remember anything else. Huh. Oh, that's uh, it's interesting. And I guess out of what was uh, Winona in the like class that we all showed up when, when there was only like twenty students that were like in the school that were not sick and. Like no, that's the class she she's... was not there. Okay, so that's not the class that she's referencing, right? Correct. She's referencing class that she had with you, and then when the next day you guys wound up going out to the Griffin Nest, so she went to class that day. Gotcha. Okay, cool. And uh, when you say that you you started to feel sick, you know what? I, I guess I, I'm not I'm not a doctor or or anything of course and and don't mean to pry but i guess what sort of symptoms were like what sort of sickness were you were you feeling everybody started getting sick everybody was it it kind of felt like the flu but then people started just passing out how bizarre how bizarre how bizarre how bizarre how bizarre well i guess the good news is that you know you're you're feeling better now of course the the memory loss isn't uh, isn't a great thing. I know it's a scary thought and feeling when you wake up and you don't remember something that happened, as if you blacked out in a sense. So I understand that that's an unsettling feeling, but at least uh, at least you're safe. Yes, thanks to you, of course. And uh, at this point, you've come back down into the basement of the Arcthanium, and you're headed past the furnaces and the surge canister. Awesome. I guess uh, as we're walking past the basement surge, uh, so so a uh, a side note for you, I was actually uh, working on fixing this basement surge, and I and I sort of say it in a way of like trying to get off the topic of like you know just her being sick and everything like that to try to make her feel a little bit more comfortable real quick, but also in sort of like a like a very subtle show off sort of way to like impress her even more, I guess. So I yeah, I bring bring that up that that I was working and helping on the surge. And she says, Oh wow, that's that's really impressive. I mean I I know that there were problems with it. Is it is it all fixed now? Yeah, I believe so, which that actually Actually, so so something interesting had happened. How do you recall how long ago it was that you got sick, and uh, went to the infirmary and don't remember what happened after that? Do you do you have any recollection of how long you may have been there for? I don't know how many days it's been. I know it was the second day of class. Since the second day of class, hold on. Side note: How long? What day of number of class are we <laughs> we on in like actual game like? Uh, let's see, first day of class was episode two, and then you guys went to the Griffin, they, oh wait, hold on, yeah, first day of class was episode two, then you went to the Griffin, and that was day two, and then, uh, you got back on day three, and you went to the infirmary, then you went to bed, then on day four, you went to class. So it's either day four or five. No, oh, so we're we're that early into the school year still. Yeah, <laughs> you guys have been busy. Yeah, I was gonna say I felt I felt like we were weeks in at this point, but okay. So second day of class, like she went missing, and it's only like day four or five, so she's been gone for like two or three days. Yes. Okay. Um. Well, since the second day of class, that's uh. I guess that puts you a couple days that that you've been missing, which, you know, <laughs> I I apologize uh, that I, that I had not taken notice that you were, you know, missing from some of the some of the classes on you know days three and four and even potentially five. I know with everybody getting sick and the classes being shut down, I just you know wouldn't have realized that you were missing to come to come find you. Otherwise, I would have um, reached out. I, I guess I guess that means too. Even if I did try to go and get the notes from you, you wouldn't have been there. Which now now I feel now I feel bad. You I mean you could have come to get them the next day, and uh, who knows maybe you would have gotten sick if you had come to see me. Yeah, but also at the same time, if I would have tried to come get the notes the next day, I may have realized that you were gone sooner, and 
you know, maybe could have could have come and found you earlier. So, oh, that's, that's okay. I I understand. Um, we've got lots of things going on. It's our last year, and clearly there are some big things, bigger things happening out there than we're maybe prepared for. Like, I I just don't feel strong enough. I only have like twenty hit points. How many do you have? <laughs> Why is she inquiring about how many hit points I have? She going to wreck my ass here. She can't I'm know sorry. That. <laughs> what is Paul doing to your ass? Paul is breaking the real third wall. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I'm feeling it. Feeling uh, I'm feeling a little more more stronger than you. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm feeling feeling like uh, feeling about sixteen out of twenty. Yeah, I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty comfortable here, but. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to laugh at me about it. I'm oh, just I'm not, asking. I'm not laughing. Um, I, I guess, I guess I'm. I, I've, I have like fifty three. <laughs> wow, wow. But, but that's okay. Um, you know, you're right. It, it's, it's a big year uh, with the final coming up, and you know, let, let me, let me ask you this: what is, uh, what does your study group look like? Like, do you? Because I know, like the, the final test that, that we're all worried about. It's a, it's a group collective test and uh we're gonna have to be unfortunately relying on our uh study groups a little bit for it so i guess how do you feel about your overall study group i mean it's not the strongest group but but i have lots of everybody in my group i like and i'm sure that we'll do just fine you know we have i'm the alchemist and then we've got a couple of good wizards and um we have a cleric which is always good you know someone someone who can cure wounds and whatnot, so... Yeah. Um, and at this point, you are up into the Arcthanium and you're climbing the stairs to your dorms. Very nice. You know, if there's any any certain area that you're not feeling as, as comfortable with, maybe, you know, maybe we can hang out a little bit more outside of uh, our classes and, you know, work work together to both, both uh, get a little bit better um, so that we're, we're prepared. I think I would like that. Uh, I I just you know I, I want to make sure too um, that that nothing happens to you during the final or anything, you know just just after what happened last year to to some of those students and everything. So, but also spending a little extra time together would be nice. Well, that's that's very sweet of you. This is me, and she points to her dorm door and says, "I I appreciate you making sure that I got back okay." Yeah. And, and at this point, you know, we could, we could see it's like one of those classic standing there fiddling for the keys. Yeah, like the the dangling of the keys, like you know, very very much struggling to to try to make make that next move to see. You know, am I going to like so? So it's the dangling of the keys situation. You know, are we gonna kiss? Or are we gonna not? Are you gonna invite me in? Or are you gonna not? Am I just like what's going to happen after this? So. Like at this point, just very, very awkwardly standing there at the at the door. Would you like to roll an insight check? Oh yeah, let me roll an insight check to see. <laughs> <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to figure out is, uh, you know, the insight of a does she want me to kiss her before I leave, and b does she like booty stuff, <laughs> <laughs> and b. Is there, like, do I get the feeling she wants me to come in or not? All right, I'm trying to remember from a previous episode if I still have my inspiration. <laughs> Holy glock. Because I know, I was just listening back, and I know that you had given me inspiration. I'm trying to think if I've used that role or not. Well, have you marked it off your sheet? Well, I'm, that's what I'm looking at. It's not on my sheet, but now I'm also trying to remember if I ever marked it in the first place. Because looking at the box, I don't really see anything erased there, maybe? Well, it's how erasers work, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Let's go with you don't have it. All right, all right. No inspiration. We rolled, we rolled a strong seven. Oh, no. Uh, you don't think that she wants you to kiss her. You think that she is just looking forward to hanging out with you soon. Sad face. All right, all right. So as I do not feel 
that she wants me to kiss her right now. I'm gonna be like slowly, like kind of backing up, taking like small steps away, like leaving her at the door and just, well, um. Giving elephant puppy dog eyes. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> la 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 la, my oh my. <laughs> I, I hear that play in my head out of nowhere. What? <laughs> wow, wow. Oh, wouldn't it have been so funny if. I had set the rope trap to, like, do that at one point, and then it, like, accidentally went off right now just out loud and just made it so <laughs> awkward. It just started singing that song. That would have been funny. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, my character's not this <laughs> this kind of guy that would make this move, so... He's also not the kind of guy to, like, ditch his friends and go try to get some. So he's he, he he's evolving. He's taking steps to be a... Fighting for our lives. And... <laughs> I didn't know <laughs> if I knew there was any trouble. <laughs> well, put it this way. Hold on. Oh, taking a step back here for these fuckers. <laughs> when they went back to look for Dixon, we I had no idea he was not in the room. We just thought he was following us and he was back in the room still. Well, I had no idea. It was that? like Dixon disappeared. It was like, oh, you, you guys run back for Dixon and we'll catch up with you. Like, there was no... Dixon's missing. Otherwise, I would have been like, "Oh, we have to find him." So fuck you guys. Or you're trying to make me look like so the bad caught guys. Up, trying to get some butt. You didn't care. <laughs> I was given no reason to care. <laughs> you should always care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm just kind of like, I am like very slowly just taking these like kind of small steps back, and I'm like, "Well, yeah." So I guess, um, yeah, maybe. Maybe tomorrow, t- tomorrow night we we get together and uh, go over some. Well, I can. Well, actually, while I'm here, um, is it a bad time to? Add, do you still have those notes? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> she looks down and wraps her keys in her hand and uh, puts them in the lock and says, "Why don't you come by tomorrow and uh, we can go over those notes." Yeah, yeah, no, that's, uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I think, I think that sounds like a good plan. Tomorrow I'll, I'll come by and you can, you can fill me in on the, <laughs> on the, on the notes from class, uh, the other day. And I, I guess I can, can fill you in on some of the stuff that you missed, uh, while you were gone. And I guess, I guess also, you know, if, uh, you know, you start feeling weird again, uh, or anything or any sort of sickness or, uh, anything following what happened and you need any, you know, company, uh, feel free to, to stop by my dorm later on. You know, I, I can stay up with you and hang out and everything, too. I appreciate that. Well, bye, Manny. Good night. Good night, Paul. Winona. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, Winona goes into her dorm room. And what I would like to do is after she closes her door, I just kind of sit there staring at her door for for a good while. But, like, not in, like, the view of if she looked through the people that she would see me. Wow. Like, just Gave standing there. But I definitely, like... But I wanted to hear I, I'm kicking breathing. myself right now, right? Because, not because... Listen, just to be clear, Manny is not this guy that saves a girl and, like, yeah, I've got to go fucking rail her brains out right after this. <laughs> <laughs> that was never my pure intention here, but was the idea of coming back to a girl's dorm room exciting to me? Yes, but I was not <laughs> coming at this with the intention of, man, I'm getting laid tonight because I saved this girl. <laughs> that was not my first thought, but it was an exciting thought. <laughs> like, Anyways, there's definitely that like social anxiety after this of like, man, did I like that went well? But, man, did I also fuck that up and make it really weird and awkward? So, just kind of sitting there, and as I'm, like, walking away and everything, I'm just really just kind of lingering outside for a couple extra minutes, just in that off chance that she, like, reopens the door to be like, wait, Manny, like, whatever, but... Wait, Manny, take me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that's that's what I that's what I immediately do. And then? And then, uh, yeah, so I'm guessing it, 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 the door doesn't open back up. Well, and then I realized <laughs> that in order to get back to catch up with the rest of the group, 
like the way I was walking away from her dorm room was like the opposite way. So I have to like cross back in front of her door again now. <laughs> but anyways, I walk back by the door and I guess you put your ear up to it to see if she's gossiping about you to her roommate. Yeah, I use my super sensitive here. Actually, I have keen smell. So I would like to... <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that is my feet. <laughs> Anyways, after that, I guess I'm simply going to... I'm going to start heading back, actually probably to my dorm, because I would imagine that, you know, again, I had no idea that Dixon found a secret door, that he was doing anything. So my guess is that everybody kind of was right behind us and that they were going to be meeting back at our dorm. So... From there, I would like to head back to my dorm. Okay. And uh, out of curiosity, it is evening time now. Would you get ready for bed and tuck in for the night, or would you wait up for the rest of the group? I guess I I would be waiting up because I would have anticipated that they probably would have been there by now. So I get back and... I guess when I notice they're not there, I kind of wait up for a little bit. Okay. Well, while you wait in anticipation, we'll end this episode and uh, find out what happens next time on the Death Saving Bros podcast. And you'll have to wait until two weeks from now. Wait, why did you have your fucking headpiece in? Man, you got to listen to all of... No, I didn't listen to all of it. Man. Anywho. (laughs) Uh... Hope all of you listeners enjoyed this episode. It was a little weird having all of our players in the same room, but dealing with different situations because the party is split and it remains split. So make sure you check in next time to see what happens next. Until then, if you can't wait to get your hands on some more Death Saving Bros material, you can always head over to patreon.com slash deathsavingbros where we have bloopers which there are going to be a lot from this episode. Um, Conversational recaps, which is our pre-show recording, trying to figure out what we are doing for this episode, and uh, extra episodes. If you'd like to keep in touch with us, we are available on social media, at Death Saving Bros on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit. I am personally available at HP Camper. You can find me at Benfro15. I'm at I must underscore B underscore rad. You can fuck off, but also follow the Reddit. You can find me on the PlayStation Network as F-A-T-T dash Smith. And to all those of you who are listening in their cars, in their homes, or wherever you may be, keep saving those death throws, and we'll see you on the next one. This episode was made possible by our patrons. The following individuals have pledged at the $5 tier. Tad Corsi. Thank you for your support. Some of the sounds and background music in this production are copyright material.